And Lionel Chinks Pickens Jr. was gunned down on a queen. The light and shots just went off. But I felt something go on my ribs. I felt blood and the shots was ringing. Woo, 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 woo. The shots were so close, he jumped right on top of me. Like two shots that went through him went through me too. All I heard is <laughs> The NYPD says the alleged murderer stalked Chinks and picked a perfect location, boxed in by construction barriers with no video cameras. This was a targeted and he was hunted. After performing at a club Sunday morning, the hip hop artist, part of French Montana's Coke Boys, got in his car and was not far from home when a vehicle pulled up to his portion opened fire. A passenger was critically injured. Lionel was hit 15 times. What has this last day and a half been like for you and for your kid? <sighs> Pure torture. Um, it's, it's the hardest thing I've ever had to deal with. Um, there's no pain that can compare to having to bury my husband and explain to my kids that their father's been murdered and he's not coming back. One fun-filled night in 2015, Lionel Pickens, known to the hip-hop community as Chinks, would host his last party without even knowing it. For after, he would be hunted, ambushed, and murdered in cold blood. It was Saturday, May 16, 2015. Chinks was set to host a party in Brooklyn at Club Red Wolf. Before his club appearance, he spent the day enjoying the company of his wife, Janelle Pickens. He was home with me all day, the night that he went out, Sunday, Saturday. He had a Saturday night. He had a party to go to that he was hosting. The sun set and the night came in. They spent the early hours of the night together until a little after midnight, around 12.30 a.m., May 17th, when Chinks was about to leave to go to the event. His wife was tired from their day together and decided to stay in bed while he headed out. They shared a heartwarming joke about it before he said the words, I promise I'm coming straight home. I'm not going to do anything after the club. He came to me probably about 12.30 at night, asked me if I wanted to go. I was already tired. I told him, just go. I'll see you when you get home. And I was falling asleep while I was talking to him, and he was laughing at me. And I, his last words was, oh, my baby's tired. And then he said, you sure you don't want to go? And I said, no, babe, go ahead. It's all right. I'll see you when you get home. And he said, all right, I promise I'm coming straight home. I'm not going to do anything after the club. With that, Chinks left and went the direction of the club. At that time, he'd normally have his entourage with him that he could trust to watch his back as he was not only at the time an artist in the spotlight to be the next big rapper signed to French Montana's Coke Boys label, but Chinks also had a past in the gang environment. On that particular night, his trusted people wasn't around. He had a video shoot the following day in New Jersey, and most of them lived there, so it was decided it was best for them to stay instead of traveling to the city just to go back with him the next day. Why do you feel like members of his crew weren't with him that night? He was like, we have a video shoot tomorrow in Jersey. Some of the guys that was rode with him all the time lived in Jersey. So they like, there's no point going back to the city. It's just me and him. So instead, Chinks called another friend and Coke Boy affiliate, Yemen Cheese who agreed to come along as to not leave Chinks alone without anyone for support in the event something happened. Chinks called me, want to come out? Got a little spot in Brooklyn. He called me, yo, you coming? Ain't nobody coming with me. I'm like, damn. So I had no choice, so I went. Little did they know, something would happen. They arrived at the club, and it was a great turnout. Chinks was on stage performing and having a grand time. The crowd was loving it. From all accounts, it was a night to remember with no animosity or negativity lingering in the atmosphere. DJ Babyface would be the one handling the music for the event that night. It was his first time, but would unknowingly be his last time with Chanks. The event was a success. <laughs> Yeah. 
At 3 a.m., Chinks and his friend Yemen decided to head out. At that point, they then decided to head to an after-hours hookah location to continue the festivities, but upon arrival, the place was closed. We get in front of the club. I told him, tell him we're going to go through the back because I want to bring my drink in because I don't drink alcohol. I drink lean. Yeah. The energy was perfect in there. It was a good vibe. We left 3 o'clock. His security told them, let's go to an after-hour spot. We get in front of the spot. The spot was closed. Everybody was leaving out. The next move they made would be critical to Chinks' survival. They decided to call it a night. Chinks said they'd go to his place where Yemen could then take a cab and get home as it would be an easier commute. Surveillance footage from outside the hookah location shows their vehicle, a silver Porsche, leaving the area. For the next 10 to 15 minutes, they were driving, listening to Chinks' music, still high off drinking the night away. To them, it was a fun end to a hype night. Yeah. He's like, I'm gonna just take you to my crib. You could take a cab from my crib. I'm like, all right. We drove for 10, 15 minutes. Mind you, I'm hired up. I'm sipping lean, I'm lit. He's lit too, we listening to his album. Seconds later, around 4 a.m., their vehicle stopped at a red light. That's when assailants that were telling their vehicle took their moment to strike. Gunshots were heard, and at that point, Yemen felt something pierce into his ribs. Then he felt blood coming from his side, but had no time to react before more shots started firing into the vehicle. We're not paying attention about nothing. We, he's just driving. I think he stopped at the light, and shots just went off. But I felt something go on my ribs. I felt blood, and the shots was ringing. Woo, 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 woo. Chinks would jump on top of Yemen, taking the brunt of the attack being hit upwards of seven times, while Yemen was hit twice, one bullet puncturing his lungs. The shots were so close, he jumped right on top of me. Like two shots that went through him went through me too. All I heard is <laughs> It's almost as if he knew he wouldn't make it out alive and try to at least save the life of his friend. One of those bullets struck 27-year-old Antar Alziadi and pierced his lung. He believes Chinks shielded him and may even have saved his life. A drive-by passed and ambushed us and started shooting up the car. I got shot, and when I got shot, I went down, and he jumped on top of me and took the rest of the shots. I got shot like one time. He got shot probably like seven to eight times. At that point, the timer on Chinks' life was quickly ticking down. He was still alive after the attack, and with his last breath, told Yemen to drive. Being in critical condition himself, he reached over to the steering wheel and was able to steer the car a short distance before hitting a parked car in front of Dunkin' Donuts as the assailant's vehicle made their escape. Using whatever strength was left, he saw police officers and rushed to them for help while he himself was slowly dying. I looked up, nobody was there. He like, yo, get us out of here. He couldn't move, so. He was still alive. Yeah, he was still alive. He's like, get us out of here. So I turned the wheel with one hand. When I turned the wheel, the car started moving. I turned. When I turned, I hit the park car. When I hit the park car, I jumped out to get some help. So I see police or lights or whatever. I, I stopped them. I'm talking to them. They trying to ask me questions. I'm like, my friend in there is d Please, I need help. Take us to the hospital. I'm Police at the scene recall Chinks having as much as what appeared to be 15 bullet wounds in which some may have been exit wounds. They also recovered 9mm shell casings at the scene, which they state all came from one shooter. Investigators believe there was one gunman and are not yet sure about the getaway vehicle. But one thing is clear, with highways nearby, it was an easy escape. We did recover 12 uh, shell casings from the crime scene, all fired from the same gun. They were taken to Jamaica Hospital Medical Center, where Lionel Pickens, aka Chinks, unfortunately, was pronounced dead on his way to the hospital. Yemen Cheese was given a 15% chance of survival and luckily pulled through his injuries. And how close did you come to losing your life? They said it was 85%. This is right here, right next to my heart. One around my heart, just like that. Investigators would arrive to find the bullet-ridden vehicle with bloodstains revealing the tragedy that just occurred. Chink's wife 
who had awakened around 5 a.m. to find Chinks nowhere back home. Her next reaction was to call his phone, but he didn't pick up. In her mind, she brushed it off as nothing, thinking he probably went to the studio. He promised me he was coming home, and about 5 o'clock in the morning I woke up, and when I seen he wasn't home, I started to call him. When I didn't get an answer, I didn't think the worst. I just felt like, you know, maybe he went to the studio or something. That's what he usually likes to do. Approximately five minutes later, she received a phone call from his manager informing her that detectives called, saying Chinks had been shot and transported to the hospital, and they want her to give them a call. The worst was still yet to sink in within her mind that maybe Chinks was gone. That would change when she gave the detectives a call, only to be told to come to the hospital, but not to come alone if she's driving. Right then and there, his wife knew that she was on her way to receive bad news, and that exactly was the case when she arrived. The hip-hop community was left in mourning, along with his family and friends, and shared their condolences for those hurting. The search was out to find out who could possibly have felt such animosity towards Chinks that they'd hunt him down ambush him and take his life. Hip-hop cop Derek Parker believes it was no random act, but that Chinks was set up. This is what happened. I believe Chinks got set up. There's no doubt about that. Time would pass, and there were no positive updates about the case. Persons began fearing the case would run cold like so many hip-hop homicides prior. It has been nearly six months since Chinks has... Tonight, his killer is still on the loose, and now there are growing concerns. His will become yet another unsolved hip-hop mystery, but it's not because the cops aren't trying. The region had little camera footage. The perpetrators timed their attack in a blind spot where construction work was being done. The NYPD says the alleged murderer stalked chinks and picked the perfect location, boxed in by construction barriers with no video cameras. That would change approximately five months after Chinks lost his life. According to the detectives, an aspiring rapper by the name of Quincy Homer was pulled over by the cops. They were smoking dope and arrested. The cops found a 45 caliber pistol in the vehicle. While being interviewed by detectives, Quincy would state that he knows the guys who carried out the hit on Chinks, and that would be the turning point in the case. What helped you? Break it open. Yeah, so our biggest lead happened five months later. Quincy Homer is pulled over by the police. There were smoke. They're all arrested and they recover a 45 caliber pistol. Quincy is interviewed by detectives and he proceeds to say that he knows two guys at Chinks. Detectives would set up a pro for interview for Quincy to tell them everything he knows about the hit, but he never showed up to court. The reason later being found out to be because he was involved in a bank heist in November 2015 at a Wells Fargo bank in Hampstead, Long Island, and he was luckily ID'd as one of the assailants of the incident that stole $375,710. We set up what's called a proffer interview, and he's going to tell us everything he knows about Shanks. Sure enough, he doesn't show up for court, so Quincy's on the run. Turns out the reason he didn't show up for court is that they did a bank robbery in Hempstead, Long Island. Quincy is ID'd. During the incident, Quincy bashed a bank employee in the face with an AK-47 rifle as he and others proceeded to announce a robbery. Detectives caught their big break. From that incident, they obtained an old cell phone number belonging to Quincy, and pulling data, they found out that Quincy's cell phone was at the Red Wolf Club that night. Chinks lost his life. Not only that, the cell phone also pinned Quincy at being at the hookah bar Chinks and Yemen went to, and then at the crime scene, leading to detectives discovering that Quincy allegedly stalked, hunted, and sprayed Chinks' car with bullets so many times that he knew he would not survive. 32-year-old Quincy Homer was already locked up facing charges from the bank heist. From that, we got Quincy's cell phone number and another cell phone that he was using. Sure enough, Quincy's number was at the scene where Chinks was in Brooklyn giving a concert. Wow. And up in Queens at the hookah bar and at the site. So he was following him. But he didn't follow him. They hunted Chinks down. And a second suspect, 26-year-old Jamar Hill, who was already locked up on a five-year sentence since May 2015, 
for a separate burglary was also pinned down as the other person involved in Chink's hit. It took approximately two and a half years, but on December 14, 2017, detectives gathered enough evidence to arrest both men who were already locked up on charges connected to Chink's hit. Why did you do it? Both suspects were charged for the hit. One attempt, assault, and two counts of possession of a weapon and pleaded not guilty and were held without bail. Homer also faced separate gun and dope possession charges from October 2015 on a case in which he had stopped appearing in court. What's even more heartbreaking about this entire homicide is what the evidence uncovered. According to an NYPD official, it's alleged that the motive for the hit stems from a conflict that dated back nearly a decade. According to Lieutenant Richard Rudolph, commanding officer of the Queen's South Homicide Squad, Quincy Homer, 32, and Jamar Hill, 26, hunted, carried out the hit due to a clash that took place while Chinks was incarcerated. According to Rudolph, Chinks and Homer fought each other on September 27, 2009, while both were housed on Rikers Island, and Quincy Homer probably got the worst of the beating and wanted revenge, even more so when he saw Chinks' career was blowing up and not his. The feud would reignite years later, when Homer showed up at Chink's performance at Sound Garden Hall in Philadelphia on April 24, 2015. The two would get into a verbal altercation, which allegedly resulted in Homer being blacklisted from the other rap stars, which only enraged his jealousy and anger more on his quest for revenge. What about his alleged What can you tell me about Quincy Humer? He was an up-and-coming rapper himself. They were at a concert hall there in Philadelphia. He had words with Chinks. It was an old beef. He was upset about that. The rest was history, leading to the hit of Chinks. Now that the suspects were apprehended, close friend and label boss, French Montana, recalled seeing Quincy Homer at Chinks' funeral. And you really look at the neck Chinks was at the funeral. Wow. This piece of information in itself nearly also resulted in another innocent man getting into trouble unprovoked. Fans and bloggers reaching for any news to boost their fame began searching for evidence. Quincy Homer was spotted at the funeral and a series of photos began circulating with the alleged evidence. However, the person that's allegedly in the photos with Chinks' hat on later came out stating he was not Homer and urged persons to stop tagging him as the one responsible as he was actually a close friend of Chinks. He was not Homer, but looked similar to him and went by the name Tana Street Heat on his social media platform. His Instagram now, Tana Street Heat TV. Things were spiraling out of control. Chinks was clearly loved and persons were out to gather whatever evidence they could to smear his killer for all to see while others were just out to ride the wave of fame putting information, even if it could have gone terribly wrong, identifying the wrong person. Another piece of critical information that was also spread by some was that Jamar Hill passed away of a heart attack in 2018, but that was incorrect. The person who suffered a heart attack was the defense attorney of Jamar, who went by the name Deron Castro. Currently, the case is still underway, both are looking at 25 to life if found guilty. In July 2018, one of the suspects, Jamar Hill, agreed to cooperate with authorities to enter into a plea deal. But to date, the case is still active. Quincy, why did you do it? Why did you do it? Hopefully it ends with justice being served for Chinks. Rest in peace, Chinks.